In the first part of this video, I really focused on how the tribal level of consciousness is where we get started in this journey called life. And to prove my point, I gave a number of examples of how tribal people think that I think most of us are glad we've outgrown. However, even though the tribal level represents a lower level of consciousness, at this point in our history, being a modern society, there are also a number of characteristics of tribal life that we can learn from today. However, as I'll show in this video, what we want to do when we learn from tribal peoples is not go back in time to the way they used to live, nobody wants that, but rather what we want to do is take what was great about these cultures and integrate them into our way of living so that we can grow. And in my opinion, above all else, what we truly need to understand from tribal culture is that spirit is truly everywhere. As tribal people believed, every moment of our lives is a spiritual experience, and every choice we make or action we take has a spiritual dimension and spiritual consequences. But how many of us are actually thinking of the spiritual dimension of life, for example, when we're at work, lying to our clients, or hiding losses? I wonder what the spiritual implications are going to be in families where the parents don't spend any time with their kids. 27 million Americans, that's 1 in 10, are currently on antidepressants. And that doesn't include all the people on illegal drugs. To me, this is just a sign that on a spirit level, people in today's world are really suffering. And for the most part, they're trying to relieve their suffering in entirely the wrong way, often through addiction. So while it's true that our modern world has brought us many technological wonders and a great degree of individual freedom, our over-dependence on purely rational materialist thinking has led our culture into a type of wasteland, or as Ken Wilber calls it, the flatland, a purely rational and meaningless world, which feels flat because it has no depth to it. And it's right at this point in our desperate thirst for meaning in life that we can start to look to the tribal cultures for inspiration. Now this doesn't mean that we need to follow a strict series of superstitious beliefs in order to keep from being punished by the spirits. No, this time around, rather than trying to please the spirits out there, we're trying to follow and satisfy our own inner spirit. You see, at every level of consciousness, the intuition of our inner spirit is communicating to us from the other side. However, as the rational mind develops, it starts to block out the other side, treating it as if it doesn't exist. And in doing so, the rational mind does its job of blocking out the irrational beliefs that are not helpful, but it also blocks out the a-rational intuition that can help us guide our lives. Now the reason I call it a-rational is because it's actually superior to rational thought. The rational mind will always lead you to the safe, comfortable, predictable, and logical solution that everyone would expect. But the a-rational, intuitive voice of your inner spirit will lead you to make the life choices that make you feel alive, giving life the meaning you're looking for. Now in the same way that our education system helps us to develop our rational mind, getting in touch with your inner spirit takes a little bit of work as well. But this time it's your shamanic skills that need developing. And this is especially true if you've got bipolar disorder because there's nothing like a manic episode or a depression to let you know that your inner spirit is unhappy with how you're living your life. And so now I'd like to give you a few tips on how to develop the shamanic side of yourself. So the first thing you might want to do is start paying more attention to your dreams. As I mentioned earlier, the other side, our dream world, was considered as real to tribal people as this world is to us. However, for the most part in our modern world, we're taught to ignore our dreams. Now, while I'll be the first to admit that sometimes our dreams just seem like total nonsense, if you pay a little bit more attention, you can see that some dreams that you have may be deeply meaningful for your life and help to point you in the right direction. It was a single dream that inspired me to go to Peru, where I met my wife, and then more dreams that inspired me to leave my country of Canada to move to her country of Brazil. Now sometimes the message of the dream might be obvious. For example, if you have a dream that you're killing your boss, it might be a sign that it's time to quit your job. At other points, the meanings of the dreams may seem more mysterious and symbolic. Like the recurring dream I used to have that I was being chased by a tiger. Eventually I figured out that this tiger represented my inner spirit and that I was ignoring it. That's why the tiger was chasing me. 
And looking back, I can honestly say that it has been in following my inner spirit and ignoring my rational mind that I've made some of the most important and interesting choices of my entire life. Now, if you're interested in taking a deeper look at your dreams, I also highly recommend meditating, especially before you go to bed. A short meditation of just 15 or 20 minutes can help to make your dream world more vivid, meaningful, and alive. And as you get more practice, you might even want to try lucid dreaming, where you're able to become conscious in your own dream, controlling the elements in the dream while you're there. And one other aspect of our dream world that few people realize is that this dream world stays with us while we're awake. And even though the rational mind is dominating our daily life and we're obsessed with the sensory world around us, all we need to do is close our eyes and we'll find that our dream world is there and it will respond to us. And in fact, many therapists and shamanic healers today take advantage of this ability of ours in visualization exercises, where we consciously interact with the materials of our dream world while we're still awake. Now, the next lesson from tribal shamans all around the world isn't one that modern people like to remember too often. In fact, they like to avoid this lesson at all costs. And that lesson is the value of suffering. Let's face it, it's a tough world out there, and it's always been a tough world. And in fact, the world has never been tougher than when you're living in tribal society. But what these people understood was that it was in overcoming their suffering and enduring their pain that they actually grew in strength and even purified their souls. And as a result, many of the rituals performed by tribes around the world are often extremely painful. Take that sun-moon dance I was talking about in the first video. Now, like I said before, three days, no food, no water. It's not an easy ritual to go through. But having done this dance four times, I can tell you that it's precisely because of the intensity of the suffering that it's the most powerful ritual that I've ever been a part of. Now, does this mean that I'm recommending that everybody go out and starve themselves to death, tattoo your face, and stick pins through your chest? Uh, no. But I am hoping that the kind of courage tribal people show when they go into their rituals will inspire you to face the pain and suffering of your daily life. Because what you're going through in your daily reality is just as important on a spiritual level as what you would endure in any tribal ritual, and often takes just as much courage. Now if you're bipolar, it's going to be this last lesson that's really the most important, but as you'll see, it really incorporates the teachings from the other lessons as well. And that lesson is that when it comes to healing your bipolar disorder, you need to learn how to swim. You see, it's been well documented that many shamans become shamans after experiences of being plunged into the other side, or what psychiatry would call an acute psychosis. But of course, the big difference is that while the psychosis is blocked by psychiatry, the shaman learns to swim there. That's where he gets his power. And just like the shaman, when we have bipolar disorder and these experiences basically take us over, rather than running from them and blocking them like modern society wants us to do, we need to start embracing and engaging these experiences just as if we're swimming on the other side, just like a shaman. So just to give an example, when you're in a psychosis, you might feel like you're a bear or you want to act like a bear and you don't even know why. Well, according to psychiatry, you would block that experience with medication. But following the shamanic path, you're going to want to let that bear come out. You're going to want to let yourself roar or even just move around the house like a bear, provided that you're not hurting yourself or anyone else. And this is how we heal the disorder. We get in touch with those feelings or energies that are coming from the other side, and we want to be them. We want to express them in the way that they want to be expressed. So whether you feel like a warrior from a past life or a baby being born again, if you feel like you're traveling through space or you've become the reincarnation of Jesus Christ, you need to be able to express these things in order to sort of move through the process. However, as opposed to the tribal shaman who is going to see the world from his magical perspective, interpreting these experiences in concrete, literal terms, eventually when you heal your bipolar disorder, you need to be able to look back in your experiences and see them as spiritually meaningful, emotionally meaningful, and deeply symbolic, but not as the physical, literal experience that you seem to be having at the time. It's the difference between knowing that you accessed your bear energy and thinking that you were an actual physical bear. Or perhaps more importantly, it's the difference between knowing that you had accessed your Christ consciousness and thinking that you are still Jesus Christ, the Messiah here to save the earth. 
And in this way, it could very well be your ability to interpret your experiences symbolically and not concretely that could make the difference between you healing from your bipolar disorder and being stuck in a mental hospital. So if you're looking to evolve out of your bipolar disorder, I highly recommend taking a closer look at shamanism because at the end of the day, the only person that's going to be able to heal you is the shaman that lies within, your own inner healing shaman.